Hello friends, so we want to have a conversation about why exactly it is that you're feeling really, really hopeless, especially when it comes to politics, the state of the world, democracy, coronavirus, all of these things, right? We're going to take it all the way back to childhood and the relationship that you had with your mother, okay? Um, one of the things that we've really been seeing a lot is... A lot of people in this intense state of panic, not allowing themselves to not allowing themselves to celebrate their successes or not allowing themselves to be successful at this time because of what is going on around them in the world. So as a child, you need constant love, attention, reassurance, human contact, connection with mom in order to establish a general sense of safety, security, worth, belonging. I deserve to get my needs met. I deserve to get my needs met. I deserve to get my needs met. When you're connecting with your mother after having been born, your relationship with mom is most important. And we're talking about birth parent. We're going to say mom. Your relationship with your mom is most important. So the person who you stayed, who whose womb you were in, this is a, this is a birth birth mother, birth parent um, relationship. You are growing and cultivating that bond for the entirety of your creation. So not only are you receiving nutrients from your mother, you're also receiving emotions. You're receiving, um, we want to use the term social cues. And what we mean by this is, um, uh, things that will turn into kind of, is it predispositions for how you will uh, handle stress and how you will manage your own emotions. Why? Because your mother's emotional state, what's going on with her during pregnancy is being fed to you while you are in utero. And essentially, this is so that you can come out of utero with an understanding of the world better equipped, um, more likely to survive what is going on, right? So you were cooking in the oven for nine months. Mom is it reacting to her external environment and you are cooking in the oven learning okay these are the things that are going to be going on in my environment this is what I have to prepare for and this is really really important in terms of your growth and in terms of your development when we talk about brain function we understand the effects of prolonged periods of stress and anxiety and bad feelings that they have on our brain that they have on our prefrontal cortex and that they have on the way that we show up the way that we interact with others you're not you when you're hungry you're not you when you're traumatized type of energy you're not you when you're stressed type of energy so we we understand this but in terms of your body's development the biggest thing that we want to give to you right now is mommy was stressed while she was pregnant with you mom was anxious mom was in an abusive relationship bad things were happening to mom while she was pregnant with you and so you are cooking in the oven and you're not growing this um, we talk all the time about environments that are conducive to growth, environments that are going to promote healthy growth. The emotional state of mom determines um, your healthy growth outside of utero, right? Because it's going to determine how you respond to the stressors of the world. And these are the things that become almost uh, instinctual to us it's the oh my god I don't know where that that came from I don't know why I did that it's because lost the words there for a second stored in the subconscious moving forward so we need mom's consistent love attention focus, emotional connection, like we need her physical one. And this just makes sense because of everything that we said, your emotions, your mother, very much interconnected while you are cooking in the oven. I don't know why we keep saying that while you're in utero. So what this means is that you come out of the womb 
And if mom is not there consistently showering you with love, attention, and focus, mirroring your emotions back to you, showing you concern for when you feel sad and helping you begin to understand emotions, helping you to begin to be able to regulate emotions, going from feeling bad to feeling good, this is the work that we do together, right? Because you didn't get that. When you don't get that from mom, we're going to go with what happens when you get it so that we can easily loop back to what happens when you don't get it. When you get constant love, attention, focus, warmth, connection, validation. As a baby, you're crying. Mom sees you. She looks at you sympathetically. Oh no, what's going on? My baby, it's going to be okay. I'm here for you. You're safe. Blah, 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 blah. Your emotional needs are just as important as your physical needs. A lot of you grew up in an environment where your emotional needs were put to the back burner. Generational trauma. Nobody in the family knows how to regulate emotions. Throw them to the side. They're irrelevant. No, they're not. They're so important. And you're barely getting your physical needs met. In this early relationship with mom, mom is meeting all of your needs, right? Needs for food, needs for emotion, needs for touch, needs for, for physical presence, all of this. So when you experience a break in the bond with your mom, which is so incredibly important because your mother is the only person that you know. Your mother is the only person that you know. When you are born into the world, you are reaching out for your mom because I don't know these people. I don't need no ride. Thank y'all. They trying to pick me up. It's like, excuse me? I don't No. Your relationship when you're bond with your mother, this is the person who will keep me safe. This is the person who made me. This is the person who I've been bonding with for nine months. And of course, as you continue to grow and develop, you become more familiar with your other parents and your siblings and, and the people who are going to be in your immediate environment. That's not what we're talking about. It's nothing like the bond that you're going to have with your mother, period. So when you experience a break in this bond, a break in the bond, a break in that first relationship, meaning you're experiencing separation from your mom in some way, meaning mom is not emotionally available. For some of you, um, mom had postpartum depression. Mommy was not emotionally available. Mommy could not meet my emotional needs. I wasn't getting the love and the care that I needed. Or mom took a vacation. Mom left me at the babysitters for a weekend or a week, right? The, the time is going to vary. But we're not talking about, I experienced a break emotionally with my mom. She left me for two minutes. Not necessarily that. When you experience this break, no, we're not there yet. Mom shows up for you. Every single time you cry, mom shows up for you. Every single time you have a need, mom meets that need. When you're getting your needs met by your mother, you then develop this, this understanding that life is always going to provide for me. Life is always going to provide for me. My needs will always get met. A sense of safety, a sense of security. You're then more likely to become an adult, become a person who is confident in their ability to meet their own needs. Life always provides for me. Things always work out for me. Mama always shows up for me. Great. When you don't get that, when you don't have a present, stable mother, there is a break in the connection. That break in the connection results in feelings of unsafety, feelings of insecurity, results in so many other things, affects you in relationships moving forward, being more emotionally closed off. But what we really want to talk about is the fact that when you don't have that relationship, when you don't have that constant love, attention, and affection from mom, we don't have the general idea and the general belief that life is going to provide for me. I don't know what's going to happen, right? When mom is coming in and out, when mom is unstable, when mom is dealing with other things, when mom has other priorities. For some of you, it was work. For some of you, it was other siblings, right? Mom could have been trying to provide for you and all of this. None of that matters because when you don't have the consistent love and attention from your mother, 
as a baby, when you don't have that consistent attention and focus from your mom, you are then equating this to the death of your mom. You're grieving your mom. Your mother is dead. The person who was supposed to meet your needs is gone. That is a catastrophic event that you just, you can't process. You can't process that as a kid. And that has so many other different long lasting effects. Worst case scenario, that's the person who grows up and becomes a sociopath, psychopath. What we're focusing on today is that really, really deep feeling of unsafety, insecurity, and instability in your life. I don't know if I'm going to get my needs met. I don't know if I'm going to get my needs met. I don't know if it's going to come. I don't know if I'm going to be able to pay my bills. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this. I don't know if I'm going to have food. I don't know if I'm going to have shelter. I don't know if I'm going to... This is all rooted in breaking the bond with your mom. For those of you that this resonates with. And there can be a lot of different things that can contribute to this. You'll know. Some of you sit down, have that conversation with your mom. Some of you, you know what your upbringing was like. You know how your mother treated you. So it's... <laughs> Fuck politics. Fuck the state of the world. Because we're going to be so honest with you guys. There are certain issues that you don't actually care about. And it's not because you're a terrible, horrible person. But the only reason, a feather, the only reason why you care about certain issues and you go so hard for certain issues is because of your childhood wounds and trauma. The reason why you're reacting so intensely to what's going on outside of you is because it mirrors back that relationship that you had Growing up in an environment where it wasn't guaranteed that your needs would get met, where it wasn't guaranteed that you were going to be okay, where it wasn't guaranteed that you were going to be provided for. That's what needs to be addressed right now. Your biggest focus is on gaining a sense of safety and security. Or being, I'm now on a journey of gaining safety and security. Easiest thing I can tell you to do, root chakra, lam chance, L-A-M, chance, root chakra. Put that shit in YouTube, listen to it. Every day, show up for yourself. Every night while you're sleeping, whenever it comes to your mind, whenever you're feeling unsafe, do it consistently, you will see results. You don't do it consistently, you won't see results and you'll still feel unsafe as fuck. It's your choice. I'm saying you can get with this or you can get with that. We tell you to show up for yourself because you claim to want to have a good feeling life. But when you don't show up for yourself, it's easy for you to not show up for yourself and then beat yourself up for it. Why? Because you're mirroring the behaviors of your parents. Because you were never a priority. How are you going to prioritize yourself and show up for yourself when your parents never prioritized you and showed up for you? Now, last thing we want to talk about is a lot of people are thriving right now. This isn't a terrible time. There's a lot of people making a lot of money. There's a lot of people buying new cars. There's a lot of people buying homes. Natalie traveled um, the country throughout the year last year. And every single place she went, she would always ask us to guide her to the most expensive neighborhood because that's the life that she lives. And, <laughs> and every single time she would be driving through these neighborhoods, it would be just sold signs all over the place, right? There are people who are stimulating the economy. There are people who aren't um, going crazy right now. There are people who are um, thriving. But a lot of you, because you're afraid to feel better than others, because the stress that mommy and daddy were going through while you were born overshadowed your accomplishments. Yeah, I'm doing good at school, but we don't really have food to eat at home. So I'm going to keep my report card in my backpack. My parents have enough to worry about or you showed them your accomplishments and it was, yeah, that's good. And then we have other more important things to do. 
We really want you to allow yourself to be celebrated. Start celebrating your wins. Begin to shift your focus. We have like less than 30 seconds. That's really all that we've come to talk about today. I send you guys so much love. If you want help sifting through this energy, I have a $600 for an hour clarity call with spirit. You can also come join my five month long program. DM me and I can tell you all of the ways that you can work with me and I can help you begin to shift out of this energy. Okay, bye.